Hi, this is Derek from 100peaks.com. I'm outside the Santa Isabel Open Space Preserve West, I believe it's called. And uh, we're just west of Santa Isabel where we can get some good pies at the bottom of the hill. Uh, looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. It's a little uh, overcast, uh, but it's definitely sunny, definitely warm. It's uh, flirting with 80 degrees out here, so, uh, and we're in the middle of January, so it's going to be a nice day. Uh, should be a nice uh, rolling grassland hike and up a ridge, so I'm really excited. This is the first solo hike I've done in probably, I don't even know how long it's been. Uh, it's probably been at least six months or more uh, since before Whitney. Yeah, it's been quite a bit since I've uh, done a solo hike, so I'm excited. Um, I just helped out a couple of uh, uh, new hikers. Uh, they didn't realize that you can push open the, uh, the pedestrian side of the gate to, to get in. They thought the whole thing was locked and closed, but it's mainly to keep livestock in and uh, cars out. So um, anyway, it should be a beautiful hike. Really pumped, got a late start today. Uh, it should be beautiful. As you can see behind me, this grassland with the oaks and uh, see some squirrels camping on the rocks behind me. Um, I'm, I'm really pumped. It should, should be a little stream crossing and uh, just a beautiful hike. So um, come along. Well, as you can see behind me, uh, there's the stream crossing. Uh, it's pretty small, so even considering uh, the amount of rains that we had. So it seems like it's very, very seasonal at best and only when there's a lot of rain currently. But it, this is a beautiful little, little valley right here. And I'll just pan around a little bit. You get where I came from around here. There's the tiniest waterfall in the world. Lovely sound though. And you got that rolling grassland. It's just the uh, little stream just zigzags throughout it there. And there's the trail ahead of me. And then it's grass covered hill here. And uh, so, so far it's uh, been absolutely beautiful here. And there's a uh, it's like a little crowd back there, a large uh, fenced area where they have the, the cattle right now, but evidently they move the cattle back and forth, so uh, as of right now it doesn't appear that the cows are actually where I'm hiking, but you know, who knows what's on the other side of the hill, so, so far so good. Okay, so now that I got to this point, uh, the map makes a little bit more sense. Uh, the stream crossing is actually going to be down this hill here, it looks like it is a little bit more substantial than the little stream I crossed back there, but I do have to say that this hike is... Uh, in every way as beautiful as I thought it was going to be. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous out here. We have the, uh, the grass covered hills with Engelman oaks on it. And uh, it is truly uh, beautiful out here. I feel like I'm in Northern California or something. And uh, you can just see uh, behind me, you can see into the uh, Santa Isabel area, the uh, Julian Mountains are just behind me, Vulcan Mountains behind me. And uh, uh, it is just beautiful. And then you can see uh, some cows down at the bottom of the hill there. They're enjoying the scenery as much. It looks like we have some horse riders coming too. So um, anyway, uh, this trail definitely is used a lot by the local uh, uh, horse owners and I can see why. It's absolutely beautiful. It's very friendly to them. A lot of ups and downs and uh, I'm going to keep on going. Okay, now this is a stream. <laughs> this is more like it. This is Santa Isabel Creek. Uh, I'm not sure if it runs all year long. It might. It might dry up in the summer. Uh, very possible. Um, but it is flowing very well now. Uh, we had a lot of rains in the last couple months, and specifically about a week or two ago. So it's still feeding this. Um, uh, very nice. I could see why uh, they're setting this place aside. This is a relatively new area here. Relatively new open space preserve. Uh, it's part of the San Diego River Park, and uh, it's very obvious why they're saving this. It's uh, it's still, I think, partially privately owned, so the owners of the ranches around here are letting us in. That's, that's why uh, we do see some cattle in here. I wish I had my trekking poles today. I broke one of them on the last hike on a fall, bent it. Uh, it would help me cross the stream earlier, but I'm just gonna go up and down a little bit and see if there's a relatively easy place to go. I'm sure there is. And um, let's see.
Well, I don't know what kind of view I'm going to get from the peak because it's not a, uh, a typical uh, walk up peak. Uh, well, you probably walk up it, but there's no trail that leads right up to it, so there's probably not a viewpoint. Or, you know, there could, there, I could be just sitting in the brush. So, I uh, want to take the opportunity to once again pan around and uh, show you what I'm looking at. And uh, came across another little, little valley uh, with ponds and streams. Uh, cattle lounging, eating. Looks like a lot of the cattle had recently had calves. This is the trail ahead of me. If you look down to the valley there, you'll see black cows uh, lounging around, enjoying themselves. Definitely not very dense back there. There's a little pond back there, a mountain. I'm trying to figure out what that might be, but uh, don't know offhand. And then in the distance, you can see the backside of Woodson, or what I call the backside of Woodson. And uh, Iron Mountain just barely peeking out there. So, um, definitely a view all the way down. And uh, almost the whole drive here, uh, you can see Cuyamaca just looming over the whole county. So, uh, once again, we're in winter, so you can see pretty far. And Cuyamaca is visible from almost anywhere. So, hopefully, you'll be able to see it again from, from the peak. So, uh, gonna keep on hiking. Well, this is one of those things that's going to happen every once in a while. Um, I suppose I should have let my fingers do the walking uh, and given them a call, but a lot of times I like to ask for forgiveness than permission. So, uh, and in this case, uh, I don't like crossing, crossing uh, fences like this. Uh, I know a lot of uh, peak baggers do. They want to do it just to get the peak, but uh, my goal isn't solely to gain the peak, it's to uh, gain peaks that I can then encourage other people to go to. So in this case, um, looks like I'm stopped here. So uh, during the week, I'll probably go home, uh, give them a call, and uh, find out what the situation is, ask if they can open it up, if they need help in opening, because I think this trail is definitely worth hiking. And if there is a trail that can go to the peak, or at least get close to the peak, uh, I definitely think it's worth doing and worth trying to make it work out. Uh, there may be land owner issues. Uh, this might be privately owned back here, even though technically it's part of the, the reserve. So, um, uh, disappointing, but uh, at least I got a good hike out of it. I did not get peak number 53. That will have to be something else, and maybe I will look at my map and uh, try to just get something on the way home. So, too bad. So sad. I'm going to go back to a uh, picnic bench I saw back there and have a little lunch and then uh, head back down.